Hey everyone and welcome back to another 3D Revolution. In this video we're going to be looking at the options that you may not have noticed that you can access by right clicking on the model either on the build plate or the list on the right. Let's have a look. Okay, so as I said, this video is looking at the features accessible by right clicking the model either on the print bed or in the menu on the right. So if we look at this menu, it gives us a long list of options. The first one is instances. So you'll know what this is if you watched my instance video, but this is basically the same as clicking this plus button here. Uh, it's creating a second instance of this model. The difference by doing this compared to importing the same model again is that as an instance, whatever you do to one will be replicated through all the instances. So you can make edits in any way to one of them and it will be replicated on every version. Even if you move them around, the edit will be in the correct positions. The next option is to remove an instance. So that just removes one instance. Again, the same as clicking the minus button up here. After that, you've got set number of instances. So this allows you to jump to a specific amount of instances. Let's select five, for example. Again, you can move them around however you want or you can space them around your print bed um, and anything you do to one will be replicated amongst all of them and then you can remove them individually or just go back down to one then the next option and the last option of instances is to fill the bed with instances so this will create the maximum amount of that model on this print bed that will fit successfully so if i click that this is the amount in that orientation that it is managed to fit in the print bed. You may be able to fit more if you were to, for example, rotate it a certain direction first and then try that feature again. And next is just delete. So this will delete that model from the print bed. Um, after that, we've got printable. So clicking this tick is the same as ticking the eye here. It means that it remains on your print bed and it remains something that you can play around with and edit with, but if you were to click slice whilst this eye has got a line through it, it won't be included in the slicing and therefore won't be printed. If you had multiple items on here and one or two of them didn't have this on, everything would be printed with the exception of these. Next, we've got reload from disk. So I'm gonna bring in a different model to show you that. So here is just a cube which I have made. So with reload from disk, if you were to have created a model and imported it into your slicer and then you needed to go and make a change to your model and then you didn't want to have to make all of the adjustments in the slicer that you've already done, you could right click and select reload from disk and it will replace this model with the newer version of the same name in the same place. So let's have a quick look at that. If I was to just uh, remove part of this box now. Let's go with that and then we'll bring this down to here. If I was to then export that and replace the original file under the same name, then if I go back to Prusa Slicer and then right click reload from disk, you can see that it has replaced the model in the same position, in the same scale, but with the newer version on file. So next let's go back to the other model. Okay so next we've got convert from meters and convert from imperial units. So this allows you if you've imported a file which uses the different measurements to the system that you've set up here, so either millimeters or inches, this allows you to convert it so it is scaled correctly. After that we've got replace with STL. So this is similar to the reload from disk feature, but rather than specifically replacing it with the updated version of the file in the same place with the same name, you can replace any file here with a different file. So let's replace with STL and we'll replace it with the Kali Dragon. See, it's got rid of the original Benchy and replaced with the Kali Dragon. Okay, now next we've got export as STL. So what this allows you to do is if I was to make some adjustments to this. If I was to right click and export this as STL. Now, if I get rid of that, if I import the original Kali Dragon, you can see that is as it was before. If I was to import the XL that I've exported, then you can see that it has retained the edits that we had already put into it in Prusa Slicer. 
So let's get rid of these, bring in Benchy again. Next, we have got scale to print volume. So if you want to scale a file on your print bed to the biggest that you can fit within your printable area, click this and this is going to be the largest that you can print that file without exceeding your print volume area. Next, we've got fix through the net fab. So on this file, you can see up here, there's a exclamation mark. So by hitting that or by right clicking and clicking fix through NetFab, it tries to repair any potential issues with this model that could cause issues later down the line. So if we hit that, and then now it has repaired the issues that it had noticed. The model will likely look exactly the same to you, but it has repaired issues which could cause problems when it comes to slicing. Okay, and then next we have got simplify model. So let's switch to the Kali Dragon for this. So this is more for if you're printing a file which is just too complicated for what you need to print and it's either taking too long to slice or you need to remove some of the detail that's causing an issue when printing. If you go to simplify model, you'll then get a line here that allows you to adjust how detailed the model is. So extra high is effectively going to be what you have already got. But then as you drag this to the right, you reduce the quality of the model and therefore make it more of a polygon style model. You can see here it has lost some of the detail and now we have got these hard lines rather than the curves in them because it is removing the amount of detail used in the model. Next we've got mirror and this just allows you to mirror the orientation of the model. Uh, so you select which axis you would like to mirror it along. So let's go with the X and you can see that it has flipped it the opposite direction. Let's do that again. And we are back to how we were to begin with. Next, we have got the add part and negative volume. So I'm going to be uploading a tutorial shortly on negative volume specifically. So I'll be looking at that in more detail. But what this allows you to do is, let's say you create a box and I put this here, this will remove this area of this print. So if I click slice now, it has removed that area of our model. So let's get rid of that for now. As well as the negative volumes, the add part allows you to effectively join shapes to it. So if I was to create a box and put it in a similar place and then click slice now, you can see that that is now all one part. So we'll come back and we'll get rid of that again. Okay, so next we have add modifier. Again, you may have seen my modifier tutorial, which goes through this in more specific detail, but this allows you to select an area. So everything within this cube will now have any setting I apply to this box applied to that area. So I could select my infill and set that to be 90%. You can see that I've only got 20% infill set up here, but if I was to slice now, and then come down through the model. There is the 20% infill, but as we get down, you can see the area that was within that cube now has 90% infill. Okay, next we have add support blocker. So using shapes in the same way that we have with the modifiers and the negative volume, this allows you to select areas within your model that you want to block support material. You don't want any support material being made in that area. And you can do the same with Enforcer where you select an area where you force support material to be created, even if it's turned off everywhere else. Next we have height range modifiers. So similar to the other features here, you can select an area of your print, but rather than creating a shape and moving it and resizing it, you can specify a specific range in height. So if we select that, and then down here, we've got start at height zero, stop at height two. So that's in millimeters. So if we were to start this at, let's say 10, and then we stop at height 15, you can see that it is within this area, it is going to be affecting. So if we then right click this range, we can either apply an infill or another setting. So if we select infill and we add 
80% to that. If we now slice, the section within those layers will be affected with the 90% infill. So we have 20% as we come down, and then we hit that area at 80% infill, and then it is back to 20% again. The next three options, infill, layers and perimeters, and support material, I also mentioned in my modifiers tutorial but these allow you to effectively apply a specific setting to this entire model. So if you had multiple models on your print bed, you can specify a different setting for your infill, your layers and perimeters, and your support material for this entire model. And finally, we've got add settings. So this allows you to add any of these specific settings to just this model. So you could add uh, a specific extrusion width, fuzzy skin, which I'll be covering in a tutorial soon, a different infill, you can apply ironing specifically to this model, different layer and perimeter settings, skirt and brim, the speed which this model is printed at could be different to the other models in your print bed, and again, support material. It's also worth noting that any of these settings here can also be applied to a modifier. So if I was to create a box here, and then I was to right click on the box and click add settings, you can then apply these settings just to the area of this model within that area. Okay, and that is all of the settings in the right click menu. Well, as always, I hope you guys found that useful and hopefully you found some funky new features to use in your 3D printing. I've got plenty of other videos that are tutorials on 3D printing, Prusa Slicer, cameras, drones, tech, the lot. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much.